Scientists study the resting state functional connectivity, or RSFC, of the human brain to obtain a deeper understanding of how the brain functions. Since the data collected are of high complexity and dimensionality, neuroscience researchers typically focus the analysis only on a small subset of the data, or the average brain networks from one or multiple groups of subjects. However, a vast number of factors could affect brain activity, and research has revealed immense variation of brain functional connectivity across individuals. It is essential that neuroscientists have the tools necessary to conduct a detailed and flexible analysis of RSFC datasets at multiple levels. We design a fully interactive visual analytics system that aims to support comprehensive analysis of RSFC and similar datasets. Our system consists of five components. The first component on the left is the settings panel, which is used to set up parameters so that the users can explore the desired aspects of their data. On the right-hand side, the correlation matrix view, 3D graph view, and information view are the three views that serve the purpose of displaying detailed information about the brain network. The MDS view is placed at the center. It utilizes the multidimensional scaling method to visualize the differences between individual scans, between scan sessions of different subjects, and between groups of subjects. In the MDS view, various visual cues are employed to provide some insight into the hidden dimensions. In particular, the scan session indicator can help identify the self-stability or similarity of brain functional connectivity of each subject across multiple scan sessions. The shaded color in the background depicts the uncertainty of the MDS result. It raises the user's awareness that the nodes placed in a highly uncertain region may not be as similar as they appear to be. There are several other interactions which can be applied in each view. Some of the interactions link multiple views, and the affected views will be updated simultaneously. Please refer to our paper for more detail about the visualization design and the interaction supported in the system. We demonstrate the utility of the tool with one representative case study. We start by examining the entire dataset in the MDS view. With the session indicator representation, we can find that scans from the same individual tend to cluster together, showing the strong influence of individual variation on RSFC similarity, regardless of group membership or the timing of the scan session. In addition, we select some of the average scans and some of the individual scans from both control and stress groups and then display their correlation matrices on the MDS view for a quick visual comparison. We can find that making comparisons using only the average data or only individual data may lead to contradictory conclusions. The pattern of the average brain scan suggests that there is little difference between the stress and control groups. However, the insight drawn by the individual scans indicates that the brain function connectivity varies across individuals no matter which group an individual is in. To show this with our system, we first set up the necessary parameters in the settings panel. We select the pre-computed dataset which stores the difference of each individual's brain network from before and after the cognitive tasks. Then, we select the desired normalization method and distance metric. After that, we choose to explore the data collected only in the first day of the experiment. Finally, we recalculate the MDS based on the current settings. In the updated MDS view, we can see that the nodes of the stress subjects tend to be placed on the left side, while the nodes of the control subjects are mostly placed on the right side. This pattern suggests that the stress task induced changes in the brain functional connectivity in a different manner than the control task. From here, we further analyze the functional connectivity of which brain regions diverge the most between the two groups. We can first select the two nodes that represent the average difference of each group, and then display the distance between them in the correlation matrix view and the 3D graph view. Moreover, we can set a relatively high threshold to the correlation values so that we can easily observe which brain regions, or the functional connectivities between which brain region pairs, contribute the most to make the two groups of subjects different from each other. Thanks for watching.